so if you look at the today's ai maturity curve we are at a stage where ai is 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 very narrow and and targeted towards certain use cases rather than uh ai is matured enough to mimic the general human intelligence so that's that's a fact right in in bfs and especially in mortgage we have seen three key areas wherein ai is 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 gaining a lot more momentum so i want to kind of touch upon those th- three areas right the first is ai based prediction so if you see last year when we were in the midst of this pandemic um and then congress passed the cares act and 4 million home owners opted for forbearance right so which is around 8% of your outstanding mortgages right so in this situation one of our large mortgage servicing customer asked us hey can you help us estimate the percentage of customers who will come out of the mortgage forbearance so that we can plan for the pent up demand and the defaults so in this case i think we looked at ml based prediction techniques right which based on customer past history or maybe credit situation and other external factors predicted the loan defaults right so now we can clearly see ai is helping to manage operational risk and also getting us ready for the future event so this is this is the first uh, first area so the you know ui path approach to ai uh, really focuses on three different scenarios that allow you or enable you to tackle more opportunities uh, within the organization and those scenarios kind of boil down into into three different parts so you know many use cases are document heavy uh, ram ready mentioned you know mortgages being one of those perfect scenarios but you think about a uh, plenty of other automation opportunities in client onboarding um or some application processes where you know we have to deal with a number of different applications maybe clients are submitting tax forms or identity documents as part of that process all that information we need to pull out of those documents and get it into our workflow so we need to apply something like document understanding to get that information and make it actionable the second pillar is really about scenarios in which there's high variability which Ram actually also mentioned in terms of you know loan decisioning right maybe we need to try to make a determination as to the risk of uh default in a particular process right maybe that factors into our loan approval process so in order for us to make our whole loan origination process more streamlined we need to apply some cognitive capability where rules based uh flows won't solve our problem. So that's one particular scenario where we can apply some machine learning models to help us make those decisions when there's not a nice logic to follow. And the last pillar is really about all of that additional unstructured data that resides within an organization. So, you know, we think about the number of emails, uh chat communications that uh are taking place between the bank or the financial services firm and their clients. Well, there's a whole world of data that resides in those communication channels and again we need to get that information out of those communication channels so we can uh get it to the right place we can act upon that data there's a whole host of activities that are uh the you know the world of possibilities open up once we get the data out of those uh communication channels um and that unstructured data set so you know that's our approach to ai and how we're enabling uh, greater automation within the organization that that's why actually we are uh, let's say using ai and also we are coupling ai with rpa and also it's uh, it's actually actually a triangle also we utilize human beings in our process as well so in most of our processes in apocredi humans ai and rpas are working as a team and that's it a good a trifecta of ai rpa and humans can't wait for the use cases that you have done at yapi credit so i'll try to cover few you know uh, good scenarios here the first one here is specifically around uh, the customer servicing piece uh, now as all of you would note that uh, due to this covid there was a big surge in terms of emails being being used as a customer servicing channel banks actually 
tripled or in some cases even you know four to five times the emails which were received like complaints and requests uh, increased uh, in volumes and banks were struggling to manage those volumes now we have a solution around that where you know first you have to classify those emails into respective product categories right whether what kind of product that complaint is related to whether it is a credit card complaint whether it is a loan related complaint before you can actually solve that problem right so first you have to classify those emails into different buckets so that's where we have an out of box text classification model which allows you to first classify those emails and then once that classification is done you can actually apply an auto response framework to some of your you know low complexity or medium complexity emails thereby reducing the total effort which a bank would ideally have required in responding to those large volumes of emails so that's one first example